Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel eight o'clock, and uh, we're B Pal. You know that, right? Everybody in the land knows that now. This is Joe Bork, Professor Joe Bork. A lot of people like to call him because he's very smart. And I'm Pal. I am pearls of wisdom because I am very wisdom. So there we go. B Pal, we are. We have a Patreon where people make tons of money, and we give you we give you here at YouTube Land and our Patreon people free picks. So we're doing some futures today. We did some futures yesterday. We did the AL series picks. And now we're going to do the NL series picks. This is coming to you live, by the way, from my high rise in Seattle, obviously, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's move on to our NL picks. Um, AL picks are, are looking okay. We're gonna need uh, we're gonna need the Indians to actually you know it was a pitching matchup that should have happened and it didn't happen so we're gonna need you yeah. to work a little harder on that okay today if you could just do that that would be great uh, Marlins versus Cubs sir I want to start on that one just cause what do you what do you figure about that one I think the Cubs should have the upper hand here. They have guys of more experience. Um, you got Hendricks out there. Lester had an off season, but usually steps it up in uh, big games. Um, so I think the Cubs should definitely have the upper hand in this series. It likely will go three games, though, because the Marlins have had that bite to them all season. So I can definitely see them either without Cantara or – if they decide to pick Sanchez as one of their pitchers, depending who pitches game two, if it's him or um, Lopez, excuse me, I think those guys can do half decent. Or they could use um, Stanek, who has been an opener in the past. Uh, he only pitched nine games this year. He struggled in those nine games, but uh, he was an opener for the Rays and pitched really well uh, for the Rays um, last season and, and prior in – big opening moments uh so uh they could go anywhere i would personally pick Sito sanchez just because he has fire fireball stuff has great stuff he did fall off towards the end of the season but when you have a youngster with that type of stuff after out going after alcantara who has great stuff also that's who i would throw second for them so i think one of those two would win a game so that's why i would say it's going to go three but i think because of experience the cubs will win out in three yeah, um, the, I'm a little suspicious about the Marlins because they've been through a lot this season. They weren't expected to be there. Like you've said, they're they're very resilient. Uh, they had the whole problem with uh, having how many people with COVID to start off. And uh, they went through a lot and seemed to just come back through it all. Um, I love the Cubs, though, and I love Hendricks. It's probably my favorite player in the league, so <laughs> that's pretty much why I like to. He knows how to pitch. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Like he's like that old school knows old school pitcher knows how to actually pitch. It's not not that there's I have anything against guys with heat. I just have a soft spot for guys to pitch like he does. So I really like him a lot. Um, Reds versus Braves, my friend. This is a good, great series. I think this is going to be one of the most fun, if not the most fun, to watch in the NL. Um, Bauer against Freed has a chance to be another great matchup. I do think the Reds have a chance, so how they've been playing to round out, because they were supposed to be a four superior team, and they were, and they only finished four wins behind the Braves at 31-29 and 29 to 35-25 and 25 for the Braves. I do think the Reds have a chance to upset them here because of their pitching. You got... Bauer, you got Gray, both experienced, where the Braves have Freed, who's already not experienced, and not really much beyond him, because Soroka's injured, Hamels came back and got injured right away. The Braves pitching really concerns me, where the um, the the Reds are four deep, because they got Luis Castillo, and then Tyler Male pitched amazing this year. I think you would probably go with Castillo if it goes to game three, Unless if he pitches two, then you would go with Gray game three. But if they can upset, like I think they're going to do in three games, Maley's a guy that, with how he's 
got going this year and pitched pretty solid, I would be confident in as a four starter. You'd have a 1.15 whip. So going at least four, four and a third, five innings, and you don't pitch as deep in the playoffs anymore, it seems. I'm confident in him doing that pretty decent for them if in the next round. Well, and I think I could you could easily see him being used in the pen in this round because he's probably not going to be used as a starter. So yeah. look out for that. That's why I think the Reds have a chance to win, too, because their other starters could be used out of the pen and be used very effectively, the ones that will not get pecked in this, uh, to be used in this series. Uh, and I think they'll have to because that, that's pretty much the Achilles heel of uh, Cincinnati is that they don't have the best bullpen in the world. But if they can use them in the pen, especially in a three-game series, um. I like their chances, too. At the very least, throw some juice on it. It's close enough that you're getting and you're getting good juice for that play, for sure. Um, if they're – yeah, I like the – and also, I, I think it's also the fact that I just like the Reds, period. I'm, I'm, a Red, I'm kind of a Reds fan, so – but hopefully that's not the case. But in my mind, um, the pitching could very well overtake Atlanta. This From that, the big red machine days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. I don't know. It's something about the Reds. I've always liked them. And uh, so it's always been my one of my favorite teams. Yeah. And Probably Pete my Rose favorite. Being the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go. <laughs> What's that? Moving on, though, because that can yeah, be yeah. a whole topic in itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cards versus the Padres. This one I do not think is going to be an upset. Um, the Cardinals got going towards the end a bit there. But, I mean, they still are 30-28 and 28 going up against the Drays, who were one of the more consistent teams in baseball. Um, I think they're going to be able to keep hitting and also get more consistent pitching through and through in the playoffs rather than because – we saw Davey step up huge for them. That was a great pickup. Hopefully Clevenger, which now seems like he's not going to pitch in the wild card series and could be out a bit longer, is able to come back. But Dennison Lamette pitched really good. Paddock's been struggling a bit this year, but uh, has had good moments again and really can put it together. And then Richards hasn't been amazing, but he's been good enough to definitely be used out of the pen and then as a four starter when I think they advance to the next round. So I think their pitching's still good enough, and we know this team can hit. You don't get nicknamed Slam Diego for not being able to hit. So I would say that's going to go to the Padres. I think it will go three games because the Cardinals also have pitching that disappointed them this year. But if, say, Flaherty actually pitches like we know Flaherty can in likely game two, that can win them one of these games if they don't upset in the first game and then um, the Padres win the next two. Because we've seen lower seeds win first games multiple times in many sports, and then they just don't win a game after that. So, Yeah. Um, my, <clears throat> my, uh, my thinking is if, if uh, the Padres can find a way to get around Kim today, I think it's going to go straight. They're going to win them both. It's this is the this is the game here that I'm I'm a little concerned about, uh, but I think they have the bats. Um, it all depends. Like you know, when some some pitchers, it's better for them to have to be like their first time in the because they don't realize how big it is. Almost, I remember when I played hockey, um, I was one of those players that never really understood the how big the game was i just sort of went out and played it would bug the coaches a lot but actually i did really well in the playoffs because i never held my stick tight i was just out there playing right and um it depends when it comes to pitchers there's there's different pitchers that are like that too that that just kind of go out there and pitch and it doesn't really matter it's actually the next time they play in the playoffs where it's filled in their head, oh, this is huge, and they start getting nervous. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, And goaltenders are like that, too. There's been lots of goaltenders that kicked ass in the playoffs and then never did it well again. It's sort of like they just were sort of lost in the moment and not feeling the effects of the levity of the moment. So we'll see what happens with this uh, this series here, If if, if uh, this game here. Uh, if they win this one, I think it's over pretty much. Would you agree with that? Yeah. 
for sure. This next one I don't think really needs to be discussed. Doesn't well, we'll talk about it anyways. But <laughs> <laughs> the Brewers versus the Dodgers. If the Brewers win this series, it's got to be go down as the uh, upset of the century, possibly. Maybe in the baseball, maybe the biggest yeah, upset of all time. Yeah, 43 and 17 team against a sub 500 29 31 team. <laughs> Uh, and they have to have Suter going first game, which who's good but an opener, so they're going to have to tax or pen, so they're going to have to hope Woodruff uh, is able to go game two. And then you have, um, I'm blanking on his uh, name right now, the other pitcher, that Corbin Burns, who has an oblique uh, injury, who's probably not going to be able to pitch. So now you got to know who's going to go in game three. So that's going to be the concern for me if they're able to win a game anyway. So regardless, if they somehow find a way to win a game, the Dodgers are going to win because I'm almost certain Corbin Burns um, is going to miss enough time. I don't think he's going to be in in this series. So, And then uh, Brett Anderson's day-to-day with a finger injury, he would probably be your guy there. Lindblom's really been struggling. So even if they find a way to win one game, there's no chance to win in the series because their pitching doesn't stack up to the Dodgers. Uh, obviously, their hitting doesn't. But their pitching due to injuries mainly doesn't. Uh, they would have much better pitching if Corbin Burns was not injured. And then that would at least give them a minuscule chance because of pitching to yeah. pitch with the Dodgers and have a chance if their starters went deeper into games. Yeah. But not with the way that their hitters are struggling and Braun at the age of whatever he is, 36 or whatever. Uh, hadn't had the best average, but had a decent uh, RBI season, was one of their better producers in a season that Yelich struggled, um, that's uh, that's a concern. They need. I don't think they have a chance. If they had those guys hitting all season and it was the normal Brew Crew, then normally this team would be predicted as an upset potential. But since they haven't been playing like the normal Brew Crew, I don't think they have a chance of upsetting. Yeah, they just somehow yeah. snuck in there and they didn't even win. All the teams lost on the last day. And then the Brewers are just like, hey, everybody. (laughs) So, I mean, like, that was the most, like, unimpressive way of making a playoff in the history of making the playoffs, probably. (laughs) Yeah. The only thing good about it is, like, uh, the only advantage they have is there's no pressure on them whatsoever. Nobody expects them to win this. So, put a little bit of extra juice on it. Yeah, that's why I think the Astros won game one. Yeah, on the AL side, that's why I think the Astros took the well, because you saw no expressions on their face. They seemed to look like they had no care, but I think it was more they had no pressure, like you just said, because they're a sub five hundred team that was in the playoffs. They just well, know. Is it well, is it the Twins? Didn't they haven't they lost like fourteen straight playoff games or that something? Was seven, like? That was seventeen straight after yesterday. Seventeen. So the pressure of that alone, like to break that. St- freaking record that's unbelievable actually it's the yeah. worst in professional sports period yeah it was unfortunate because Maeda, who's been a beast uh just wasn't as sharp yesterday so that was a little unfortunate yeah anyways boys and girls yeah put some extra juice on it if you want to take the dodgers there take them to win both games and uh it's, i think it's pretty almost guaranteed money i would i'd probably i'll probably do it actually why not even if i'm only making 50 percent of my money who cares on a 50 bucks on 100 the odds of that not happening are pretty darn slim so you might as well take it uh okay that's our full 42 boys and girls that's our national league series finals picks for you we also have daily picks that you can find on our patreon uh um you could download the Patreon app, look for BPAL picks, and go over there and frolic with us. We have lots of fun. We enjoy it. We do lives. We show them on there. We talk to each other all the time. We talk about our picks and all that. It's not just about making money. It's also about having fun, and we sure have a lot of it. So, um, And then also use the website if you're on your computer because apps on your computer are more laggy than the website. So oh, I yeah, recommend go on, the website, on your, yeah, yeah, sure. go on the website on your computer, yeah. Don't forget steelflyers.com coming is uh, is there now www.steelflyers we're building what is going to be an absolutely incredible website there where you're going to be able to 
see a live live programming all through the day, almost like a news broadcast. Plus, each team in each sport will have writers and podcasters that talk about each team in each sport. So you'll be able to get information, rumors, all of those things, all in one place on one website. It is and great writers too, like Joe Borak. Tell them where you write for Joe. Um, Hub Sports Radio, Flyers Nitty, and OT Heroics. Some of that, uh, not all, is linked at SteelFlyers.com. You can also find my Twitter at JJBorick26 and the Sports Fanatic News with a PH for Philly Philly fan here um, YouTube page. Yeah, check it out, man. It's lots of fun. I might be live tonight or tomorrow night watching some ba- baseball, so look for that as well at my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Enjoy the games.